Hello and welcome back to our series on selections. In this video, we're going over advanced selection tools. We'll show you how to cut your subject out automatically. We'll show you how to select color ranges and we're going to be creating a logo and placing it behind our subject in this fantastic example. So here we are in Photoshop. I've got my image of a hiker and I've got a bunch of these hiking logos. I wanna integrate the two of them. So the first thing we're gonna do is grab our move tool. I'm just gonna click and drag from one image to the other and get our logos into our climbing image. Now the idea is to create like a little bit of a banner, maybe something you would see on the top of a website. I wanna make it a little bit more interesting though. I don't wanna just put some text right above my subject. I actually want to integrate this text and these logos into the image by placing it behind my subject. And this is where we're getting into our advanced selection tools. So if you haven't already done so, be sure to watch the first episode in this series. We'll link to it right up here. Basically, we go over all the simple selection tools. So now we're getting a little bit more advanced and we're gonna show you some automatic ways of selecting your subject. We're gonna start with the object selection tool, which was recently updated in Photoshop CC 2022. It uses AI to automatically find different subjects in your image and you simply click on them to make them a selection. It's really easy to use, super fun. So we're gonna go right over here under our magic wand tool. So let's go ahead and click on that and we're gonna see the object selection tool. And as you see, the keyboard shortcut is W. So object selection tool. Now with your object selection tool, we're gonna click on this new option called object finder. And you're gonna see I've got a little turny turny sign that lets me know that it's thinking, it's basically finding all the objects in my image. Now this option right next to it, if I click that, will actually show me all of the areas that it's already found in my image. So if I go ahead and click on my background, you're gonna see it's going to think again, and then it's going to highlight in blue everything that I can actually select, and it found my subject. Look at that, how cool is that? So all I have to do is simply click on my subject, and you can see it turn them into a selection. This is a fantastic tool. Now, it didn't select the backpack. It knew that the subject and the backpack were different objects, and it's gonna allow me to select either one of those. Now, I'm gonna use the same keyboard shortcuts that I used in the past episode to add to the selection. Shift is going to allow you to add to any selection. Alt or Option click is going to allow you to remove from a selection. So let's try it. I'm gonna hold Shift and then click right here on this backpack, and we can see now it's selected out my backpack as well. So really that's all there is to it. Now in this case, because I have my subject already selected, I can do a few things with my image. Basically, I wanna create a little uh, like logo pack and I wanna put it behind my subject. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna duplicate my background layer. We're gonna click and drag this background layer to the new layer icon. So I have a background copy now, and then I'm gonna simply click on my layer mask icon. So that's going to load this selection directly into the layer mask. So here we are, we're on our background copy layer. I'm gonna click here on the layer mask icon and it's gonna load that selection right into my layer mask. All right, let's go to our move tool and see what that did. So if I click on this layer, hit V for my move tool and move it around, you'll see basically I have another copy of my subject I can put wherever I want. Okay, if I shift click on the layer mask to disable it, you'll see it's just another copy of the layer but my subject is masked out. I'm gonna hit undo a couple of times and put him right back where he belongs. So he's still there, I just put him back in the original spot. So basically I have two copies of the same subject. That's the object selection tool. It works incredibly well. Now there's another tool that will allow us to automatically cut out our subjects and it's called select subject. Let's see how that works. So I'm gonna go back to my background layer, go ahead and click on that. We're gonna to go to select and then down here to subject. All right, and let's see what this does. Again, it uses artificial intelligence to try to find the subject of your image and automatically cut them out. And in a lot of cases, it does a really great job. In this case, you can see it didn't do a perfect job, right? Like it didn't really know that it should cut out like my whole subject's leg and the face and things like that aren't exactly perfect. This tool is just a tiny bit older than the new object selection tool. So my suggestion would be when you're trying to cut your subject out automatically, try them both go to select and then down to select subject, see how that works. And if that doesn't do the job for you, then always try the object selection tool. Between the two of those, they should do a very good job. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on my background layer. I'm gonna hit control or command J to duplicate that and use my move tool. And this is what it cut out from my background layer. So you can see 
not exactly perfect. Now, that's okay because we know that selections can be changed at any time. So if you remember from our first episode, I could simply grab my lasso tool. I'm gonna hold shift to add to my selection and then I could just simply add to this and kind of clean it up wherever it needs to be. But because the object selection tool did such a great job, we're just going to leave the object selection that we made in the first example and our subject is cut out very well. So now it's time to create our little banner behind our subject. What we're going to do is simply grab our rectangle tool here. So rectangle tool, the keyboard shortcut is U, and I'm gonna go ahead and just click and drag. If I hold shift, it's going to make a square. So let's go ahead and just make a nice large square right about here. We can move this at any point in time. There we go. Now here are my settings. My fill, I'm gonna choose this to be white. So let's go ahead and choose white. There we go. And my stroke, we're just gonna choose no stroke on that. Fantastic. Now I do have some options for rounded corners here. As you can see, I can make that larger or smaller, changing the rounded corners on my image. I think that makes it just a little bit more refined and looks great. By the way, you guys can download this PSD for free on flurn.com. Just follow the link right down below. So because we already have our background, we have our subject, and then we have this rectangle. Right now the rectangle is above our subject. So if I want the rectangle to be below our subject, I'm gonna click, simply click and drag it right down and check that out. Because I already cut my subject out, now the rectangle is behind my subject and it's very well integrated into this image. It looks fantastic. Now, over here, we might wanna just edit the selection just a little bit and you can do that very easily right here on the layer mask. So the object selection tool did a pretty good job, but if we wanna edit it, we can do that. So let's go ahead and grab our lasso tool. There we go, I'm just gonna make a lasso selection. All right, fantastic. Now our keyboard shortcut, if you remember, is Alt or Option that will turn a regular lasso into a polygonal lasso tool. There we go, allowing me to make some straight lines there. Fantastic. And we're just gonna simply make that a selection here. Then I'm gonna click on my layer mask. We're gonna edit and down to fill, and I'm gonna to choose to fill that with black. There we go. Now I have a much cleaner line around the back of my subject's leg, and we're looking pretty good. So now what I wanna do is take one of these logos. Now these logos I actually got from Adobe Stock, uh, so I these are not included in your download because uh, I actually had to license them. Uh, the background image is from pexels.com, so you can download this and then put whatever logo in, if you want in there. But what we wanna do, basically when I downloaded this, it's just a pack of logos, right? And I want <laughs> I wanna extract one of these logos. Right now it's not really that useful. So I need a way to select what's actually going on in this image. For instance, I like this quite a bit, the American Alpine Club, why not? I need a way to select this color. Now, there are a lot of different ways you can select things in Photoshop. In the past, in our first episode in this series, we used, for instance, like the magic wands tool and you could click on individual words and things like this. But this is, you know, trying to go on every single letter. That's gonna take a long time. It's not exactly what we want to do. Instead, we wanna use a tool called Select Color Range. And this is incredibly useful. It basically allows you to click anywhere in your image and select similar colors. So let's go ahead and click on our layer one. There we go. Now I'm gonna go up to my select menu and we're gonna go down here to, oh, I gotta click on my layer, select, and then we're gonna go to color range. And in this case, I just have an eyedropper here. I just need to click around my image to select different color ranges. And whatever is white gets selected. So if I zoom out, you're gonna see, I can do this on my background image too, right? I can select like the trees and things like that. But in this case, really all I wanna do is select out this logo. So I just bring my eyedropper tool right over to the logo and whatever is white gets selected and whatever's black does not get selected. So we have a nice little slider called fuzziness that I can make lower or smaller and that's just gonna select more or less. So if you find it's not selecting everything that you need, like it's not looking that good, just go ahead and bring your fuzziness up just a little bit. Fantastic. And that looks pretty good. You can see we have a white area on a black background. That means the white area is gonna get selected and the black background will not get selected. So let's go ahead and hit OK. And here we are. That color range is now selected. So this is one of our advanced selection tools, select color range. It's incredibly useful, use it all the time. So it's selected there, but of course, all these other colors are really similar here. So it's selected all of those color ranges as well. 
and it selected those color ranges here on the background of my image as well. So we don't necessarily need that to continue, but what we're gonna start off by doing is I'm just gonna go ahead and fill this with a color on a new layer because I wanna extract this logo from the background. As you see right now, I just have a dark logo on a white background. I need to take it out and make the background transparent. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new layer by clicking on our new layer icon. There we go, so we're in our layer two. I'm gonna go to edit and then we're gonna go down to fill. There we go. And I'm gonna just choose to fill this. You know what, let's just choose to fill this with a certain color. I'll just make it red so we can see what we're doing and hit okay. There we go. Let's deselect by hitting control or command D or you can go to select and then down to D select. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and zoom out of our image now and I'm gonna turn, we have two layers. Remember we have this layer which just had the logos on it and then we have this new layer which I filled with red. So we made our selection, I filled it with red and look at the uh, really, really nice detail of that selection. So select color range really came and did a great job. That brings me to my next selection tool though, because as you can see now on this layer, yes, it selected the color range of that logo, but it selected that color range throughout my entire photo. So I just need a very simple way to make this area visible and the rest of it uh, invisible or just delete the rest of it. And for that, guess what we're gonna use? Selections. Yeah, this is a selection series. We're using selections a lot. So easiest way to do this is just grab this rectangular marquee tool there we go, rectangular marquee selection. I'm gonna click and drag right around the selection I actually want, and then we're gonna inverse this selection. So we haven't done this just yet, but we've selected that logo. Let's go ahead and zoom out. I'm gonna go to select, and then we're gonna go to inverse. And now it's gonna select everything else. So now all I have to do is hit the delete key on my keyboard, boom, and it just deletes everything else. All right, Control or Command D to deselect. And if I use my move tool, now you can see I can move this around to wherever I want. We have all of the fidelity of the original image, but now it has a transparent background. So we can see here, this was what we originally downloaded from Adobe stock. And you can see we have the dark mountains on a light background and I've extracted it to just have this red. Now, if I wanna change this red, it's actually extremely easy to do. We can do this in a number of ways. For instance, I could simply double click right here on my layer. There we go. And I could go to this option right down here that says color overlay. I can click that and then I could simply choose any color that I want and it would just fill that entire layer with that color. Let's hit okay. But in this case, that's actually not what I need to do. I don't necessarily just wanna fill this with a different color. What I wanna do is now make this into a selection and I wanna use that selection to actually uh, mask out part of this rectangle because this logo, I wanna be able to see through it. So that's our whole idea. We wanna see through this into the background. So let's go ahead and make the rectangle a little bit bigger. Control or Command T. There we go, let's hold Shift. There we go, that's just gonna make that a little bit larger. Now we're gonna go ahead and center this logo. So we're gonna use our alignment tools with this as well. And surprise, surprise, it has to do with selections. So if I want to turn my rectangle here into a selection, again, we just have a regular rectangle. I'm gonna hold control or command and click right here on the layer thumbnail. And as you can see, I have a little hand with a selection icon. So I'm gonna go ahead and click there. That will turn any layer into a selection. And in this case, this layer only contained that rectangle with rounded corners, so it turned that into a selection. Now, I have my layer two, okay, with this American Alpine Club. We're gonna go ahead and use our alignment tools to align this into this selection. So, let's grab our move tool, hit V for the move tool, and then here up at the very top, I have my alignment tools and alignment will happen with inside of any selection that you have active. So here you can see I can align left. There we go, let's click there. I can align center and I can align right. Okay, I could align this on the top, on the center, there we go, or on the bottom. And it's just gonna move it wherever I click and make sure that everything is perfectly aligned. So in this case, I'll just align it vertical center and horizontal center and look at that. Let's hit Control or Command D to deselect and I'm gonna hit Control or Command T to transform. Now I'm gonna shrink this down, 
But you can see as I shrink it down, it's just gonna move it off to the left there, uh, which is fine, but I'd have to realign that, which I don't wanna do. So I'm gonna hold Alt or Option, and that's going to scale this around the center point. There we go. So let's just go ahead and put this something like right about there and hit Enter. Again, if this were right over here, Okay, I could still align it to this rectangle very easily. Just hold Control or Command, click on that rectangle. There we go, which is gonna make it a selection. As you can see, we have a selection active. And I'm gonna click on my layer with the little icon, use my Move tool, and go up to my alignment options. I'm gonna align it to the center and to the center. And there we go, popped it right there, exactly where we want. Pretty cool. So we're getting there. But I want this logo to actually be a cutout for this white area. So here's how we do that. We need to turn this logo back into a selection. All right. So remember, if you have something on a layer you want to turn into a selection, all you have to do is hold Control or Command and click on the layer thumbnail. So Control or Command, I'm going to click right here on the layer thumbnail. And you can see now this American Alpine Club turns into a selection. All right. So let's go ahead and make that invisible. Now that it's actually selected, we can use that selection on any layer. So let's go up to our rectangle once more, and then I'm gonna click here on my layer mask. Perfect. Now, this did exactly what we want. It cut it out from my rectangle, but I want the opposite. So anytime you want the opposite in Photoshop, you wanna invert, and that's Control or Command I. So I'm gonna hit Control or Command I, and it's going to invert that, and now check out what we have much cooler, right? So we actually have the logo, but it's like a relief. We can actually see behind it in a really interesting way. Okay, now that looks cool, but what if I want this just a little bit darker back here? Because it, it looks cool, but I wanna be able to read it a little bit better. So what we're gonna do now is turn this rectangle back into a selection another time. How do we do that? Very simple, Control or Command, click right here on the actual thumbnail. There we go. And that's going to turn this back into a selection again. You can see we have our selection, our dotted ants right around the edge of that rectangle. So now that we have that selection active, what we're going to do is create a levels adjustment layer. Now, here's the cool thing. We've talked about if you have a selection active and you make a layer mask, that selection will automatically get loaded into the layer mask. We've done that a few times. Now what we're going to do is we have an active selection and I'm gonna create an adjustment layer. The cool thing about adjustment layers is that they come with layer masks standard. Okay, so if you have a selection and you make an adjustment layer, that selection automatically translates to that layer mask. So selection first, anything with a layer mask, that selection is automatically gonna get loaded into that layer mask. I'll go ahead and show you how it works. So we have this selection right around here Let's go ahead and create a new adjustment layer. We're just gonna to go to levels. So we're gonna to go to layer, down to new adjustment layer, and over to levels. All right, let's hit okay there. Now, as you can see in our layer stack, we have a new levels adjustment layer. And the selection that we just made is already loaded into this levels adjustment layer. So now all I have to do, I'm gonna just take my light point and bring this down. There we go. And I'm still seeing through my image but I have it a little bit darker as well. So this levels adjustment layer is simply making that area darker, but it's doing it only within this area. For instance, if I were to just make these layers invisible, you would see that here as well. I have a levels adjustment layer in the exact shape of my rectangle, making that area darker, and then I have my rectangle right above it, and then I have my subject right above that. All of this is done with selection tools. Now we've shown you how to create a selection from a layer, you can also create a selection from a layer mask. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. Here I have my rectangle, let's just turn that off and on so we can see what it is. If I hold Control or Command and click on the thumbnail, you can see now the outer edge of the rectangle gets selected. Pretty cool. But if I hold Control or Command and click here on the layer mask, now we can see that the layer mask gets selected as well. And if I zoom out, you can see because our layer mask actually looks like this, it's white with this dark area, anything that is white on a layer mask will get selected. So actually, technically it's selected everything except the logo. As you can see, it's actually selecting the outer edge of my image as well. 
Again, anytime you select the opposite of what you want, no big deal, just go to select and then down to inverse. There we go. You can see my selection boundary has moved away from the outside of my image and now it is just in the center. So we've successfully reselected our logo from the layer mask of the rectangle. Now I wanna show you guys how to save and load selections and you can do this across documents as well. So we're just going to go to select and then down here to save selection. All right, you can choose a document. I could even create a new document and put the selection on that or you can choose any open documents. Let's go ahead and choose the document that we have. I'm gonna put it on a new channel and we're just gonna call this logo. There we go and hit okay and I'll hit control or command D to deselect. Now let's go ahead and make all these layers invisible. All right, I'm gonna just create a new layer and we're just going to go to select and I'm gonna to go to load selection. So the selection is saved as a channel inside of this document, it'll be there forever. If we wanna load it again, simple, just go to load selection. Here we can choose our advanced selections, our channel, we're gonna choose logo. There we go, let's hit okay. And for instance, if I wanted to create a solid color fill layer, there we go with an interesting color like that. We could do that and this is done from the saved selection that was in our document. So you can see selections are extremely powerful. Let's go ahead and finish this up. We actually don't need that. I just wanted you to see how to save and load selections, but I think our image is coming along really nicely. How was that object selection tool, right? It did such a great job cutting our subject out and really saved a lot of time. Again, if you wanna go in here and refine that a little bit more, keep in mind the selection just went to a layer mask and layer mask can be changed at any time. So for instance, if I wanna to go to my lasso tool and just kind of like redraw the edge of this backpack just to make it a little bit nicer, I can do that. We'll just go right down there, click on edit, down to fill, and I can just fill this with black on my layer mask, boop and you can see we have a nice clean edge of that backpack. You can do this at any point in time. So now we have the makings of a really nice logo. I'm gonna hit C for the crop tool. Now with our crop tool, there's an option here for delete crop pixels. That is gonna be checked by default. I highly recommend unchecking that. That's going to allow you to get back your information at any time if you need to. So again, we talked about creating a little banner for a website. So I'm just gonna click and drag from the bottom up and from the top down, we want it to be nice and banner-esque. <laughs> there we go. Let's click on that little check mark right there. And we are looking fantastic. Now, I'm going to just organize everything. We have our logo. So I'm going to just go to my rectangle group and my levels. Controller command G to group those together. There we go. We're going to just con controller command G group those. I'm going to just call these unused. You guys can download this PSD, so you'll be able to move these things around and see how we did it as well. So now this logo, check it out. Because I put it behind my subject, I can put this anywhere I want because again, my subject is right in front of it. So as I move this around, you can see we have a lot of options. I can come back to this layer at any time. I can hit Control or Command T. I can make this larger, I can make it smaller. We can do all kinds of really fun things to create our logo variation for our banner on a website. In our next episode in this series, we're gonna show you how to refine the edges of our selections, making very accurate selections, including how to select out hair and place objects behind your subjects. Don't forget, you guys can download this PSD on flurn.com. Just follow the link right down below. It's completely free. Click on that subscribe button. We'll send you a new free Photoshop episode every single week. Thanks so much. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye everyone.